Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick unveiled a long list of legislative priorities with property taxes, grid fixes, and rural needs at the top. But to make it happen, he must reckon with caps on spending and competing ideas from other top leaders. Our Ryan Chandler spoke with the Lieutenant Governor about his priorities and how he plans to make his list law, starting with property tax relief. Why is this session the time when Texans can see some substantial and sustainable change in property taxes? So a great question. And they're already seeing change. And this year, I think, was the first time they saw the benefits of what we did in 2019 because COVID kind of interrupted the bills we passed then. In the past, whatever your appraisal value went up, your property taxes went up almost at the same rate. If your value went up 8%, most people saw an 8% increase. Well, now when people go back and look at their property tax bill they got in October, compared to what their appraisal was, uh, particularly in our bigger cities and bigger counties, but everywhere across rural Texas, they saw that their tax bill actually didn't go up like it used to. But I hope if some people go back and look at it and they say, gosh, Dan was right. My appraisal went up really high, but my taxes didn't. In some cases, school taxes went down a little, went up a little. Last session, I increased the homestead exemption from 15,000 where it had been for decades to 25,000 previously in 15, and this last year to 40,000. Before I leave office, I'd like it to be $100,000 off the top. The average home in Texas is about $350,000 now. Some areas a little less, some areas a little bit more, but that's our goal. You shouldn't feel like you're running your, your home from the, the state. Uh, it, is a main, it is a main source of our, our revenues at local governments and school districts, and, the, and uh, so, we have to work with them, uh, but they also have to work like we are, trying to keep our budgets, you know, no more than population inflation. Of course, you said property taxes is number one. Another one of your priorities, yeah. though, is education and making sure yes. that our schools have all of the resources they need and more. Those two things are so intimately linked. How do you keep raising the, the homestead exemption in a way that is sustainable for our school districts to make sure that they can also get more resources, given that those property taxes are where they're they're finding those resources? Yeah, so it's a great question. So what, what every time we raise the homestead exemption, we have to pay for that for the schools. In other words, we're not taking that from the schools. We're sending them a check instead of you sending them a check as a homeowner, if that makes sense. So I think the last time when we raised it to 40,000, I think it was about a billion three, a billion five. That comes out of our budget back to them. So, so in essence, the state sales tax collection is making up that difference, if that makes sense. I hope it does. So we do it in incremental steps. It grows with our economy, grows with our budget. Some years you have a down year, some years you have a big up year like we have this year. But in essence, we want to keep those kind of programs something that we can say, we're cutting this or we're raising that and it's gonna stay that way. We're not gonna go back and take it back. You have been uh, hesitant to to commit, as has the governor, um, to any kind of amendment to, to SB8. You kind of downplayed some of the rumblings among some, or at least a couple Republican senators on adding in exceptions for rape and incest into right. that abortion ban um, and, and kind of leaving it up to, to the members for now. But. Governor, I have never uh, heard you leave anything up just just to the members. I have a feeling that that if if that was something you had in mind, uh, you you would be uh, at least heavily hinting to the members that you'd like to see that. Sure. If all look, of that was was up to look, you, but, would yeah, would you amend ahead. SB eight to add exceptions for for rape, incest, life of the mother, yeah. things like that? So I'm pro life, and look, every life is a uh, is a life, even. Through rape and incest. And the left likes to um, make this their whole argument. Uh, I don't call it rumblings of senators. Look, every senator is a, has a right to their opinion, and I respect their opinions, whether they're Republican or Democrat. And so, yes, we have had two Republicans who have said openly, but we'll have 19 Republicans. I haven't heard from the other 17. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a bill filed on it. I don't think, I don't know, by a Republican in the House or Senate. And so, uh, sometimes, and, and when you say that, you know, I, you know, look, I'm always listening to the senators and we work really well as a team together. So look, I don't think there'll be a groundswell uh, uh, argument on that or a bill on that by Republicans. We'll see. Everything that comes uh, within your priorities and under the surplus is, is going to take some bicameralism. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. What, well, we'll have to work. That's why in my press conference, I didn't put out specifics 
I put out concepts, a few specifics. Have you but, discussed you know, the concept, priorities with, with, with Speaker Phelan, though? How, how are your discussions with him? You know, he sets out his priorities. He has his job to do. He has a different job than I have. He gets elected by the people in a, in a you know, 30, 40, 50,000 people in his district, and he gets elected by 150 House members. I get elected by over 4 million people in the state of Texas, and that's who I listen to, and that's my responsibility to them. And, you know, and let me say this, and all the other people who didn't vote for me either, because most of what we do, when you think about it, 53% of our budget is education, 35% is health care, 11% is public safety. None of that is partisan. So everything we do, you know, tries to help all Texans. I, I think that we'll match up. I think what I've laid out has been well received by members in both chambers, and I made it very clear. These are concepts, and I want House members and Senate members to now get in the specifics and help write the bills. That's why I mean I sit back and listen to them. Ryan Chandler joins us now. You spoke with the Lieutenant Governor for more than a half hour. What did you find telling about his answers? We sure did. We hit on a lot of topics, not all of which just aired. I actually think that, that the way that he spoke about the possibility of amending SB8 is very telling, and here's why. Dan Patrick is a very powerful legislator, one of the most powerful state officials in the entire country, and he's never been shy to wield that power. If he, he, in his mind, wanted the Senate to add in exceptions for rape and incest or more clarifying language into SB 8, it's a good bet that he would be asking senators to do that. He was also nonspecific about uh, the, the prospect of gambling legislation, um, but uh, he, he has said so far that no Republicans have filed bills on either of those topics and he hasn't asked them to. So I think if you are a proponent of amending SB 8 or, or maybe expanding gambling in Texas, his answers throw cold water on both of those prospects. Now, some of Patrick's priorities for the legislature included ideas to help rural Texas, notably right. mental health care and rural law enforcement funding. What do you make of the emphasis he made on those rural needs? We've seen not just uh, in this lead up to session, but throughout the entire campaign cycle, a unique uh, emphasis on rural needs. Dan Patrick embarked on a 130 stop through rural Texas uh, bus tour throughout uh, this last summer and he really explains that it he says that it, it was one of the highlights of his life I think it really had an impact on his priorities um, and and I think that will be welcome for rural Texas because they have borne the brunt of a lot of the state's greatest challenges our, our rural hospitals are closing rural populations are dwindling and I think a lot of those issues have taken the back seat uh, in, in sessions past. Uh, Dan Patrick seems to, to be prioritizing a lot of those needs. Any of those uh, uh, rural priorities he listed, whether it's mental health hospitals or, or rural law enforcement, could cost billions of dollars. So we're going to have to uh, make some tough decisions as we get into deciding how we, we allocate that surplus. All right, Ryan Chandler, the newest member of our Texas politics team. Thank you. Thank Welcome you. aboard. Thank you. All right, and you can see Ryan's full interview with the Lieutenant Governor online now. Scan the QR code on your screen to take you to the link on the Texas Politics page of our website. The plan to make big changes to the Texas electricity market now facing questions at the Capitol. We know we need this change. You all directed us to implement these changes. The proposed changes and how the people in charge are responding to concerns. 